it's that time of year again. That time of year where I drag an absurd amount of gear for one person to go ice fishing for a night out onto a frozen lake and spend the evening camping. Today, although we're in January, is one of the first days we've had safe enough ice to come out and ice fish, which is very obscure from Minnesota. If you've been watching my videos in the past, we've had a few run-ins with open water this year and trying to find outdoor activities to keep the mind at ease through this weird season. All right, I've walked myself about a half mile so far. We're coming up to our first sketchy crossing, an ice heave. What is an ice heave exactly? It's a place where two sheets of formed ice meet together. And although these are dangerous almost every year, they are especially dangerous this year because of our odd weather. That looks like open water right underneath that. You can see this is where two sheets of ice meet. We have one sheet kind of just starting to push over the top of one another. And that can create gaps where there's a lake that's not quite as frozen. It's funny, you can walk across all of this good ice and something like this can just be hidden and make your afternoon or morning of fishing pretty terrible and scary. We have about seven to eight inches out here, but I don't know how much on that heave and I don't really care to stand there long enough to check. Seriously though, it's pretty irresponsible of me to not have my ice picks on me at least. Okay, well, got ourselves a nice rock point here. I think this is about as good a spot as any to start drilling holes and getting to fishing. All right, my big computer is telling me that although there's a couple fish here, we're not in the depth we want to be at. Walk a little bit further. Let's try this. All right, I just put the computer down, it said, 60 feet this way should start to drop off a little more. Technology in fishing is a fun thing. So I got myself a little jigging spoon and a minnow head. Today we're using the Mav snare rod, a little Tiny size 1000 reel, size 10 pound test. Taking a drop and seeing if we can't catch a walleye. Seeing a fish come in on the graph right there. See that tiny mark right there and then see my jig bouncing up and down. See if we gotta track something in here. Give ourselves a bite. We're seeing fish here. Had two nice marks come through. The first set I think could have been a school like crappies or perch or something, something smaller, but the second one I'm pretty sure was a walleye. We have about three hours of daylight left and I would probably be fine to fish a little bit longer, but it does sound nice to have the house set up and get some heat going because my hands are already getting a little cold. I go run back to the sled quick and put my gloves on and then find a spot where I want to set it up. 
Well, let's see if we can't catch ourselves a fish to make for dinner. You can see that we've got really nice black ice this time of year. You can just see how thick it is. That means we got nice strong ice. Be a good time of year to bring the ice skates out actually. First thing I'm gonna do is get the floor set because for the first time I did end up cutting holes in my floor and now my holes have to be positioned exactly perfect in the frozen lake to set up my house. There's two holes. You are allowed to fish two lines version, so I gotta still drill up my second hole. See, my floor kind of has this little cutout that's for the toboggan, so we're gonna slide that fit up perfectly with it. Alrighty, now that that's out, empty some of the stuff to the side here, and then we're gonna flip it. They call these styles of tents flip over ice houses for good reason, because it just flips over. All right, we've got the old rattle reel set up. Basically, we have a piece of live bait on there, and if a fish pulls this, it makes a bell on the inside of the reel go off. All right, gonna see if I can't get my heater rocking. All right, time to sit and relax for a second, warm up, and I can get to setting the bed up. And I think I should just have enough time to Drill some more holes in the ice. See if I can't catch a fish. After many years of doing this, I've found that it is uh, in my best interest to stay mobile and move around. But there's a happy medium because you want to be able to stay warm and comfortable and not be setting your stuff up in the dark. So, yeah, there's a happy medium somewhere. Such is life. All right, I'm going to get my cot set up. I am still using my same cot that I've been using for the last three to four years, so might might spoil myself and get myself a new one this year. We'll see. But we've got the bed set up. See if we can catch something. Come on, eat it. Eat the food. Come on. It's right on that minnow. He's just staring at it. I was saying earlier, it's funny to have like one of the first real ice fishing trips of the season be in January because this is typically when fishing starts to slow down because there's so much ice and snow. Normally on a first trip, I feel like we'd be catching these fish. We've had a shot at one, but I mean, I've had five fish come by the shack now and they seem really pretty finicky.
only wanting to take a chance at the live bait and not even giving me a second look at the jigging spoon. So I'm going to have to try to switch spoons up, see if they want a different colored spoon or something. I, w I know I talked a little bit about, you know, wanting to go and stay mobile and hole hop around, but if I'm seeing fish here, I'm seeing fish here. So there's been another big lesson I've learned while fishing. It's never leave fish for more fish. Plus it's warm in here, so it's kind of nice. Still a fish just sitting underneath my minnow, but I can't sit here and wait all day for him to bite, so I'll go try some of those holes I drilled earlier. Well, I just reeled up my spoon and my minnow head's gone, so that's, that's good. Makes a guy feel like he wasn't wasting his time. I didn't have much confidence in that color anymore. We're gonna try something new. Alrighty then, let's go do some hopping around. It's colder outside than it is inside the house. Fish in that hole. All right, I'm gonna check one more hole. Otherwise, I feel like I should just stay in the shack and jig because I haven't even marked a fish yet. sign though put that minnow back down it's a bummer losing the first fish but that was that was for sure a walleye I have this thing set pretty tight and he was having no problem pulling that drag out so oh wow I just got that minnow down there and there's a fish already on it what timing I think it's got it. Oh, it might have just let go. Well, that's just ridiculous. He's looking at the bait right now. Oh, he's coming over. Oh, there's a fish coming for the for the rattle reel. There's a fish going for the rattle reel. He's gonna grab it. He's gonna grab it. Look at. You see? He's right on. Oh, he just darted off. Always on my spoon. I had two very good marks there. One grabbed the rattle reel again. I just don't get it. What am I doing wrong? He's still down there. Here he comes back. Come on, big dog. Take the minnow. He's just staring at it. Oh, boy. Oh. He's gonna eat it. He's all over it. Yup. Yup. I got one. Oh my good lord, that's a perch. Look at that thing. That thing's a mammoth. Oh, little tub of lard. Wow. Look at that big boy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six stripes. 
almost a seventh on this side. He's got the split. Oh, well, he's going on the ice. Gotta have some protein for my dinner. Thank you, buddy. All right, feels good to get the goose egg off my back. You're no longer skunked. Tell you what, it's got me second guessing half the fish that I've seen on here before, because that looked like a pretty decent mark. Oh, there's something underneath. My... Oh, Jesus, I dropped it. Rod, oh God. Here he comes shooting up for it. Here, I'm gonna catch him for you. What is it? Oh, he just darted off. Holy crank, he just flew away. That is so cool seeing him on the panoptics though. Oh, here comes a fish. Come on. Oh, he's coming up to the spoon. Oh, he's, he's gonna, he's all over it. He's gonna eat it. Oh! What the f <laughs> All right. Well, I'm getting hungry, so we're gonna start cooking. My one and only catch today, Mr. Perch. It's a wagon, dude. I could have caught a mess of these things. I'd be sitting pretty right now. He is going to take a minute to thaw out. How can I thaw this frozen fish? He's only sitting outside for like a half hour, but he is. a little bit of meat underneath those ribs, but not much. It's tough to get on these smaller fish. Do want to get all these scales off though. Cause those aren't very tasty. Give our fillets a little wash here. I brought some paper towel, I'm gonna dry them out. There we go, that's what we got for meat. Off of that perch, got a couple little Scooby-Doobs. Better than nothing. I even got myself some fresh perch eggs, so we might actually deep fry those as well. Now I gotta get my stove set up, so I can scoop that over. I don't really know where to set it. I don't really have a nice table in here. I suppose I'll just set it on the ground. Seems like a safest idea. You know what they say, every girl's crazy about a cast iron pan. Or me, I'm also crazy about a cast iron pan. Every girl's crazy about a sharp dressed man pan pan. We gotta get that oil nice and hot, hot oil. Got a little bag of Joe's Gourmet Fish Fry. I like this stuff, it's pretty tasty. It's kind of cornmeal-y. So we're gonna give that a try on our perch tonight. It should be about good for those two tiny fillets. Get it all nice and coated. I'm ready for our Hot bath. All right, I don't really have a lid to cover that, so just gonna have to live and let live. Test that oil, see if it's hot enough. Yeah, it's looking hot enough.
crunch crisping up really nice. It's like a little potato chip. We got our coconut curry. Got ourselves a brown meal here. Not a vegetable was harmed in the making of this video. First, I guess, let's dive into this egg. See how it is. Deep fried perch egg. Feels like it's gonna have a weird consistency in the mouth, but it's not bad. Tastes like couscous. Oh God. I'm gonna make sure I'm getting my water. All right, let's break into this fish. Ooh, nice steamy perch. Oh yeah, that's delish. Not gonna lie, this curry could be way better. It uh, it is not up to par with the one that I made last week. It'll still eat. I'm very happy that I caught a perch though because this by itself would be pretty depressing. I was getting a little worried this year that I wasn't gonna be able to do ice camping. Minnesota has been uh, learning some things from Florida or something, but happy to be back. One of the ways that I keep it fun and interesting for myself is trying out new gear and new tactics of fishing, I guess. So first night in this particular ice house, gotta say, it's really roomy. I like the side doors. Um, I definitely will be bringing my bigger heater next time because it is a little chilly on the, uh, the lower half, but nothing's ever perfect when you camp. Except this perch, this perch is perfect. Happy you decided to join us. Mm. This is still hot. It's still warm, that's for sure. Everybody's always curious to, to what I do with my oil. And usually I just pour it right down the ice hole. Just kidding. Don't do that. Let me bring a big bottle. Oh, God. Ooh. Ta da! It's that time of night where. Feels like there could be fish, but your fish finder doesn't work anymore. I don't know what it is, if it's like bugs that are coming up or what. But there are a lot of marks on this thing. Make sure our minnow's still alive. Trying to head the hay pretty soon. Not much of a night bite out here. It gets better in the morning, so I'd rather get my sleep early and wake up at the crack of dawn. See if I can catch myself a walleye. The rattle reel is set, so I am fully confident if fish moves through, we'll wake up and hear it. My head's gonna be right next to it, so I'm gonna keep me on my toes tonight. Tonight we're camping in the zero degree synthetic sleeping bag. A lot of weight and a lot of gear for one person. I always find myself <laughs> packing heavy, but it's worth it. Zip some of these up. I've got ventilation going. Also, the sides aren't packed down underneath very well um, just because we didn't have snow to pack around the outside, so I'm sure there's some, some air getting in. This house is nice, though. It's pretty roomy. Um, Never would I ever be able to put a hole right there in my other house, but definitely does need a bigger heater because there is more space. All right. Well, it's roughly 9.30 p.m. and my heater 
just decided to go out. You can see the pilot lights turning on. But I'm pretty sure I'm out of propane. Um, I misspoke earlier also. This is not my zero degree sleeping bag. This is my this is my 30 degree. I have one small bottle of propane. This is probably enough to last me about 45 minutes. I'm not really sure what to do right now. It's warm in here right now. I feel like that's gonna change relatively fast. I just can't believe that the propane's out. I could go back to the truck right now, but I'm gonna try to do my thing and get some sleep. Oh man, it's already cool off in here a lot. This is the first time in four years that I think I've ever ran out of gas while out here. The truck is a short walk away if push comes to shove, but I'm going to try to get some shut eye. Look, there's like a loose piece in there. I think that's why it's not worn on. Oh, well, maybe it was just low on gas. At least I know it wasn't broken. It was just low on gas. Got my one pound tank hooked up and probably got about 45 minutes left of heat before uh, she's out again. I must have woke up every hour last night, but I'm alive. Thanks, Mr. 20 degree bag. That was nice. feet are pretty frozen. Hopefully I can thaw them out here quick. This food's warming me up. you were a walleye. See, buddy. Got ourselves a big old perch. All right, well, they didn't get skunked this morning. Oh, there comes a big fish. That's a walleye. It's gotta be. Got him. Oh, what was it? Oh, dude, what was it? It was right by the hole. It was giant. I think it was a big walleye. Dang, dude. Oh. That hurts. Could you see what it was on the camera? Oh. Missed him. Didn't feel very big, though. Some action this morning. Here's a perch. Big old perch. Look at that big old perch. Whoa. Jumbo man. Well, you're never gonna believe this. I was cleaning off my fork. And I got a mark. And I got myself a walleye. Oh my gosh, look at that perfect little eater. It's my first walleye of the season. What's up, buddy? I've got some walleye in my freezer I still gotta eat, so I don't think I'll be keeping him, but he would be 
the perfect eater. There's a long, cold camping night to catch you. My first walleye of the 2024 ice fishing season. Released back into the resource. Cool, a little morning bite. All right, everything's all packed up. Now it's to start the voyage back. Got everything back to the shop. It's good night camping, caught some fish. Rang in the first walleye of the 2024 season. Hopefully next time, heating situation goes a little smoother, but I'm gonna get unpacked here and uh, get ready for the next week. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As always, until next time, you're another drill. Let's keep on trucking.